What's happening guys? Welcome back to ZR Chess. Got a fun one today, at least for me. I like going over um, stuff like this. It's going to be a little bit more of a complex um, attacking of the king. This isn't going to be... Beginners can definitely get something out of this. This is going to be for more advanced players. Um, but uh, if you're a beginner, don't don't stop watching because uh, you, can, you can definitely learn a lot from this. So... We're going to be looking today at different ways to attack a king, and one of which is this bishop right here. Um, I have a couple themes with this, and the bishop is blocking this square here, which is very important that the king can't retreat here. Um, so that's going to be very important to these these tactics today. Now, uh, see, go ahead and pause it, and you're going to do this on all of them, and see if you can solve it, and see how black is winning here. Um, it's black to move, obviously, and so we've got a few options here. We could go ahead and just take, and, and you know, nothing great happens there. Um, but it's important to notice that not only is this square taken up, but this pawn is attacking this square as well. Um, so these two squares here are going to be a common theme. The, the king can't go to either of these. So the correct move, if you went ahead and paused it and figured it out, is going to be rook takes a2. And this is forcing. Um, obviously, we want all our tactics to be forcing as much as possible. So the king is going to take here because he has to. And then after rook comes to a8, uh, there's nothing that white can do. I mean, he can make computer moves and block with the bishop block with the queen, but it is checkmate, and it doesn't look like checkmate. The king looks like it has plenty of moves, but our bishops and our, and our pawn are keeping the king in, um, so it's almost like a, a side rank mate. Um, so it's uh, that's going to be the motif here. That's going to kind of be what we're looking at, um, but in different complex forms. This one was pretty easy. So let's go to another one, and if we look... This is the same thing. Bishop is going right here. Uh, but we don't have a pawn attacking right here anymore. And that's going to be important. So we got to kind of figure out how we can put this in a good spot. So we don't have a rook over here. So how can we get a, a rank mate over here? And we want to kind of begin with the end in mind. So we see the, the way this is forming. We see how we could get a rank or a mate over here like we did on the last one and now we kinda gotta make it work to our benefit we kinda gotta get to where we wanna go so if we have the end in mind um, we, we want this here which it is and we want somehow to be blocking this and get something back here to attack him then we can kinda start to formulate a plan uh, so what we're going to do here go ahead and pause the video see if you can think of it um, So. Ideally, if we're thinking about the end here, our rooks aren't going to get over there. So best case scenario, we're going to get our queen up here to attack. We want this pawn out of the way. And when our queen's here, it'll also be doing its job right here. So what we're going to be able to do here is we're going to see that if you come up with a move, great. If not, don't worry about it. It's a very hard tactic. We're going to go bishop g5. And this is uh, quite a powerful move because if black does nothing, we take the queen. If black just moves the queen, we could take the rook. And we're going to be ahead no matter what. So uh, so what black will probably do here, especially since they have to think way ahead for this, is going to be go ahead and take the bishop on g5. And this is where, um, this is where the trouble comes in for black. So the next move, if you can think of it, is going to be actually knight takes e5. And what this does is, first of all, it attacks this square right here, which is pretty important. We're threatening a fork on the queen and the king that he has to do something about. And the queen's going to be coming up here, and this is checkmate. So if for some reason the bishop just takes here, and then um, then we just go here with checkmate. It's a beautiful checkmate. And once again, it looks like the king has a lot of space, but he has nowhere to go at all. Um, so the best move for black in this scenario is actually to block that with uh, with pawn g4. And we can do a lot of things, but right now we you know we're just gonna go ahead and fork and win the queen. Um, and then once we've won the queen, we've already won the game anyway. So that is a, a very powerful tactic here. It doesn't look like there's that much going on here, but if we know where we want to end up, we can set this up. So let's go 
on to another one. And this one, if you notice, doesn't have a bishop back here like the others did, but it's a different type. We have a knight here that's going to be protecting both these spots for us. Because before we were having a bishop here, and then either a pawn or a queen was defending the square here. So this time the knight's doing both of it for us. It's a very nice position for our knight to be for one of these mates. So if you see your knight in a good position like this, start thinking about a mate like this. All right, so um, go ahead. This is going to be a rather easy one. Again, see if you can think of... Um, you can probably think of the the solution to this after we've done the other two. Um, it's pretty easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and take queen h7, and uh, queen king has to take. There's no option. And then rook h1, and then you know it's just computer move after that, and it's checkmate because the knight's protecting both of these, and we've got that. So that was an easy one. Um, that's gonna be kind of the the motif going forward with the knight instead of the bishop. So. Now we've got a harder one here, uh, a lot more going on, and we need to figure out how we can get to where we want to go. So we want the knight to be here on e7, correct? And uh, see if you can figure it out first. But see, we, we obviously want the knight to be on the e7, because that's kind of what we're going for, is attacking these two squares. And then we want this to be attacking the king. And so we need to figure out how we can make this work. So... We need this pawn out of the way, we need this pawn out of the way in order to do that, and we need the, the knight right here. So the best way to do this, if you can think ahead and do this all in your head, great. If not, then um, if not, then I actually wouldn't do this. If you're going for a, um, a, a far solution like this in the game, four and five moves ahead, if you can't think it through all the way and be sure that you're going to win, it's almost not even doing because if you miscalculated, you're just throwing a piece for nothing. You know what I mean? So if you calculate correctly, great. If you're kind of foggy on it, if you're playing a, an important game, it might be better to be safe and not do it if you're not sure it's going to win you the game. Um, but I'm a risky player, so I'll do it often just because it feels right to me. Um, and, you know, I've been playing for 15 years, so... Uh, it's different. The longer you play, the more you kind of get an intuitive sense of what could be, what could be a good move. It doesn't mean I'm always right, but um, oftentimes, oftentimes I'm correct. So, getting this, these two pawns off the board, easy way to do it right away. Bishop g5. We're attacking the queen, and this might not look like a lot, but this queen is in a lot of trouble. It can't go. It can't go here. It can't take, and it can't go anywhere here. So it's got one move right here on g6. And if it goes to g6, even isn't even a great move, then we've got check and we're forking the queen and queen. So we're gonna get the queen either way. So the only way, and honestly, that's black's best move, uh, which is pretty funny, right? So the only way black can stop that is to take with the pawn here, and which is what we wanted. We wanted to open up this h file. So once it takes there, we're gonna take back with our pawn. h file is now open for business. And um, it's natural for queen to go ahead and take that pawn, come out ahead, attacking this spot right here. But this is a mistake. Um, see if you can think what the next move is, knowing what we know. Yeah, so uh, queen h5 is the next move. And what we're doing here is we're obviously threatening checkmate. If um, there's a few things black could try to do, um, but, uh, but not much. Black could try to go here, um, but that's going to be checkmate immediately. It might look good move, like a good move at first, but it's immediate checkmate. Um, the other only real thing black can do is go ahead and take the queen, and then once we've taken with the rook, um, I'm sorry, if we take with the rook first, then we've made a mistake, because it's not forcing anymore. Black can start to defend and all this jazz, you know. Um, so we can't take with the rook first. We need to keep the pressure up which means knight e7 is first. Checking the king, and then when the king goes to move, we take the queen with checkmate. Um, the knight, as we've done before, is protecting these two spots, and we've got this back, this uh, the side rank mate, um, which is hard to see from this position here that we started out in. It's very hard to see how you could come about getting to that position. There's only one way to do it. Um, but if we think about, like I said, the end in mind, how we want to end the game, then it's pretty easy-ish for us to tell how to get there. Um, that, that we need to do the bishop so that we can trade off these pieces 
and then uh, the knight eventually comes here, and the queen sacrifice makes sense here. Uh, not really a sacrifice because we traded queens, I suppose. But um, but yes, that's that's how we do that. And I've got one more to show you here, and this one is either really easy or really difficult, depending on how you look at it. It's not exactly like the others we looked at. I just wanted to go over it because I really like it. And it's simplicity, and at the same time, it's out of the box. So I stared at this one for probably about two minutes before I figured this one out. Um, took me a while because I kept thinking of ways that I could get a good mate here. Black seems to be really well defended. Um, obviously, pause the video, see if you can figure it out for yourself. So, you know, I, I had uh, been looking at the bishop and the queen maybe coming here, but then, you know, after the queen comes here, we've got no real attack. Um, the knight kind of wants to come in, and, uh, and, the, and the rook as well, but, you know, we've got two defenders on the back rank. The bishop is in a really good spot, defended by the queen, so not a whole lot we can do. Um, if you thought of this, then kudos to you. Good move is uh, rook e8 check. And it looks like we're just getting a piece because it's got three defenders on it. But the important part is that this bishop right here is the key. So he's got, he can take it with two different pieces, right here, right here. He has to take it because he's in checkmate otherwise. So if he takes it with the queen, then we can take the bishop and it's checkmate right there. So we distracted the queen. Um, that no motif is actually called distraction. Um, so we distracted the king, queen from protecting a key player so that we could take the bishop out. And then, um, sorry, that's the other way. I just gave it away. Um, the other way is if the, if the bishop takes, then this queen is no longer protecting the king, and we come here for checkmate. Uh, so that one is very important, too. You're not going to get this exact position in a game, I'm sure, but it's very good to know... Uh, how to think outside the box and kind of get a solution like this. I'm sure the other one you'll probably see in the game with the bishop and the side rank mate. This one you won't. This one's more about learning to think outside the box, learning to think, you know, I can go here, and then if he takes, then I have an opening here. It's distraction. Or if, if he takes here, then uh, he's blockading his own piece, and I can go here. So doing these kind of puzzles over and over is good for you to kind of... Uh, Put it in your brain. It's like it's like muscle memory, you know. It's like a uh, fighters. They they practice things over and over. They practice certain grappling techniques that they're not always going to use every game. Maybe once out of ten games, but the one time they use it, they know it because they practice it so often. Same way with chess. You need to practice the same things over and over. You're not going to use it every game, but when it comes up in a game, you're going to know what to do and you're going to beat your opponent because you've been training in it. So that's all I got for today. I really wanted to show you that. I was pretty excited about that. I hope you liked it. If you, uh, if you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments. I'd love to answer it. And uh, I hope to see you guys next time. If you like the video, subscribe. And I will, um, I'll be posting every week. So see you guys.